What's up, guys? It's Code Red here, and welcome to episode 24, I believe. It's 24, right? And we're going to be going over how to animate this scoreboard. Last episode, we talked about how to create this scoreboard, and it looks kind of lame right now. So we're going to animate the title. The title's going to have a little animation on it. And as well, we're going to update this information whenever something happens. And what I usually do is, I use if this, this is all connected to sort of like bucket kind of stuff, not really custom things. So we're just going to animate it every minute or so like that. Or, I mean, not going to animate. We're going to update it every minute or so. But if you actually have a custom thing in your scoreboard, like every single time the player does this, you can easily go in and just create that scoreboard again. And I'll explain more when we get into the code. So without further ado, this is our code from last episode. If you have a code, have the code for the scoreboard, I mean, if you don't have the code for the scoreboard, go ahead and watch last episode. We created this simple scoreboard where it has a title and has this information. So now we're talking about how to animate it. And this is going to be dealing with some hash maps and one hash map. And the reason why we're doing hash maps is because I like to save this task manager. When you animate things, you're using a runnable. And a runnable has this ID, and we talked about this ID in many episodes before. The ID corresponds to the runnable, so then if the player leaves the server, we can end that ID and stop errors from happening. So that's why we use hash maps. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a separate class, new class, I'm gonna name this the lobby, uh, lobby board, why not? Because this could be our lobby scoreboard. And inside lobby board, like I said, we're going to have a few things, and that one of the things being is a hash map. So this will be a private static map because we want to be static because we want to hold this information forever. Don't make it like class based and stuff. We just want it to hold information from when the server gets enabled. New hash map, UUID, integer. Now we dealt, like I said, we dealt with hash maps many times in my episodes. It's my favorite thing to code. If you don't know what a hash map is, basically it holds it holds the player UID and UID corresponds to this integer. It can hold many different things like inventory and all the player and all this other stuff. But our hash map holds the player UID, and that UID corresponds, sorry, corresponds to a specific integer. Once we have that hash map made, we're type in private final UUID UUID. This is final, and you guys know what that means. We need to create a constructor, lobby board, and we need to pass in a UUID. So every single time we can call this class, we need to pass in a UUID of the player. So this UUID, if you don't know, this UID corresponds to the final this UID and we're setting equal to this UID. A lot of this is basically we're setting this one, which is that, equal to this. All right, nothing this and that. We're going to create four different methods in here, and this is just the handle our runnable. We're just handling that hash map runnable. And so we public void set ID passing in that int ID. And it's going to be a task.put. UID ID. So when we call that method set ID, we're just putting in that task ID to the hash map. If you don't want to task ID is, we'll get to that in a second. Public int get ID. You know what this one's going to do? All it does is return the tasks.get UID. We're just getting that task ID. Next, we have a public boolean has ID. And this is just checking if the task dot contains key, if it contains the UID, let's return true. Otherwise, let's return false. Uh, yep, that. And the last thing we're to put in here, oh, sorry, let me uh, zoom in. The last thing we're to put in here is this public void stop. This is the most important one public.getscheduler.cancel tasks task dot get UID and we're passing in tasks dot remove UID. So this is what I was talking about. We're holding in this ID 
from the runnable, which is going to be updating our scoreboard just so we can cancel it later on when the player leaves the server or whenever we run this stop method. Now with this code done, that's all we're going to put in this lobby board. Let's go back into our main class and we're going to create another event, copy that on join event and we're going to create that on quit event, player quit event on quit. And what this is going to do is just going to remove the runnable if it has one. So we're going to say lobby board. So we're going to create that instance of that class we just made. Lobby board board equals a new lobby board. Pass in the event dot get player dot get view ID. So now that we have this board, so we have a new in instance of this class over here. We can go ahead and say if board dot dot uh, has ID, if board has the ID, then we say board dot stop. All right. Let's keep on going with this main class thing. I could make another class, but just for the sake of the video, we're going to just enter down here a little bit and we're going to create a, another method here. This is going to be our runnable. It's going to be a public void and we're called start and we're passing in a player player. And then before we do anything else, let's go all the way up to the top and we're going to type in private int task ID. All right. So once you have the task ID at the top, we can go over here to start and let's type in task ID equals bucket dot get scheduler dot schedule and uh, we can say I usually do sync task I mean we can say uh, a sync repeating task let's, let's try doing this one so let's say this one sync repeating task and then let's do this we'll say new runnable and then open curly brace press enter and then the arg2 will be 0, and then args of 3 will be, let's make it 10, and then put that right there, and add up my methods. Okay, so I guess this is depreciated, so let's get rid of the sync, and let's put the sync. Okay. Yeah, get rid of that. I guess that's depreciated, so we'll just put sync. And what if you didn't see what I did here with the run, all I did was go over here and I press on add unimplemented methods and it adds this run right here. So this is our runnable and this is the task ID, the whole famous thing I was talking about. This task ID corresponds to this runnable so that we're able to stop just this runnable when we want to, but you don't have to stop every single runnable in the entire server. Above this run, all you can do is really create variables and I guess you can initialize them when you create them and it's really important we want to create everything above the runnable and then just modify it inside the runnable so we're going to create an int count set it equal to zero we're also going to create a constructor we're, i mean the instance we're going to create an instance of our board of our lobby board pass in that player dot get uid so the reason why we need a board is because the first Thing we are going to say is if expansion point board dot has ID so if it doesn't have an ID board dot set ID to task ID this is that whole concept if it doesn't have an ID go ahead and set it so that later on when the player quits the server we can stop it cool 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 once we have that check type in another check if count equals 30 we can say count equals zero. This is just a reset thing that I'll deal with later on. Next, we create a switch statement. Count. So the switch statement is going to go through all our cases, and the cases are the counts. So every single 10 ticks, this runnable is going to run, and it's going to add a thing to the count. So if it runs every 10 ticks, it's going to count one. Count not one, now it goes again, count as two, count as three, count as four, 
and we're using those counts to change the title. So what does it look like? It looks like this. So when count is zero, that's case zero. So when count is zero, we're gonna type player dot get scoreboard. Yeah, get scoreboard. Player get scoreboard dot get objective. We're getting the objective of display slot sidebar because that is where our scoreboard's located. It's located at the sidebar. So we're getting that sidebar and we're doing set display name and our display name will be check color dot translate actually why would i type this all down when i could just go and copy it it's gonna be this it's gonna be our title that we already created down here boom oh, um, type it down so when the case is zero i want to set our scoreboard right here to what it looks like when we created it now let's copy this whole case thing and create another one so when count is one we want to add this kind of animated feel to it so i want to set this first letter c to to a pink color and then everything else will be green you probably guess what's going to happen next the same exact thing case two and in case two, uh, whoops, my bad. So after the break, in case two, we will have the same thing. Instead, the O will be pink and everything else will be green. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. We're gonna have to make a bunch of different cases all the way up to 12 where we just change the colors we're changing now d to at d at l and then everything else will be green i'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to when i finish this because this is really annoying to watch i bet um yeah so i'll see you guys in a few seconds when i finish coding this all right so i just finished putting in this kind of animated effect and if you didn't really see what i was doing here is every single letter when the time increases every single letter the c encoded red will turn pink and then the o and then the d and then the e and then the d and then the r then the e and then the d all these will just change they'll be c will be pink here then the o then the d and the blah 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 and then down at the bottom what i did was i made the whole name pink and then the whole name green and then, then the whole name pink again and then it'll add in this little cool animated effect we can go ahead and actually test this out already but before we test it out, let's talk about updating the scoreboard. Now, updating scores is kind of annoying because there's no method, at least I don't know if there's any method, to actually get a score then update it. So what we actually have to do is, when the case is 12, which is our last case, let's type in create board player. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna run our create board method right here, again, and it's gonna update these scores. It's gonna really just update all the scores and stuff so that we can get this updated information. Now we are completely done, I am uh, pretty sure. Yeah, so now we are completely done with everything. We can go ahead in the on join. When they join the servers, create the board, let's also run that board event get player. So, when they join the server, we're creating the board and then we're gonna run it. And then we're gonna run what this does, the animation. Similarly, for to make reload work, I'm gonna add in some curly braces here so we can create the board and then we can run that board. Oh, what am I doing? I mean, I mean uh, online. And let's go ahead, export this to my server. All right, now in this server, you can see this animated effect we have going on my board right here. Every 10 ticks, which is like half a second, every half a second, we have this updated effect. And you can see every letter changes to pink, and I probably have a messed up letter right there. And then goes again, pink, green. So I think I messed up somewhere, let's check. 
three, four, five, six, seven. D. Okay, yeah, so I said it twice here. I said it twice. Let me let me fix that. Did I say it twice? At D, at D, at D. Yeah, I did. Let me fix that real quick. Ten and eleven, so we can go ahead and change this to twelve. Okay, let me update that again. All right, there we go. Now it looks a little better. So uh, we can go ahead and update the actual thing now. So what we did was whenever the count hits 12, it creates that board again and updates our board. And why does it do that? It's because we have this total kills, a total mob kills. So I'm going to kill this mob. And you see, I should have three mob kills now, but it didn't update. Now it updates. So it updates every single time it hits that total pink. And that should be like what? I don't know. One second, two second, three, four, five. Uh, just like every six seconds, it updates the whole board. And we get that updated value. So that's pretty much all I want to show you guys in today's episode. Hope you did enjoy the whole scoreboard kind of thing we had going for the past two episodes. And I mean, this episode, last episode. If you want to see something, I might do boss bar next. And I'm really, I'm actually working on the custom mob plugin for you guys. I want to make sure it's perfect. I haven't coded custom mobs since 1.13. So there's definitely some API changes that I need to figure out. But once I do figure that out, a custom mob with Pathfinder goals and everything, custom Pathfinder goals will be coming. But I think next episode might be boss bar, boss bar stuff. And then we do custom mobs. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, like, subscribe, check out my patron. I actually have all the code is available for the patron supporters, $3 a month. And you also get an, an extra series. I have a bonus series for my patron supporters that can watch some extra videos of me explaining how to do some cool things. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.